let's talk about getting started with game development in Unity and the kinds of decisions you're going to need to make when you download and install Unity and start a new project. Okay. So here I am in uh, unity.com slash download, where I can go out and download the Unity Hub application. Now, this application is available in Linux, uh, Windows, and Mac, uh, and it lets me basically manage all of my Unity installs and Unity game projects in one single application. So uh, you can click download for your application, install it, and then you'll just open up that application. You'll see something like this. Now, this project's blade here is my list of game projects that I have installed on my machine. Uh, if you have something else that's not listed here, you can go over here and click open add from disk or open a remote project to add it from source control. You can also click new project and we'll take a look at that later on to start your new project. Uh, the editor by default at least starts in light theme. You can fix that by going to preferences and appearance and you can choose light, dark or to automatically match your system settings. Okay. Um, the first thing you're going to want to do usually is actually install Unity. You click on the installs blade and you'll be able to go out here and see the versions that you have installed. So I have two versions here that are installed right now, uh, a long-term support version and then a more recent version that's not in long-term support. Now the difference is long-term support is maybe a little bit more stable, it's promised to be around a little bit more often, uh, and it's going to be updated less frequently. Okay, So if you don't like having to download new versions of Unity, uh, very often long-term support might be your option. Sometimes you might want to have a more recent version of Unity that's not available yet in the long-term support for some of the new features. For example, I have this 2022.2 because the UI Toolkit feature is not available in any of the uh, uh, the LTS versions as, as a non-preview feature yet. Okay? So if you want to install a new version of Unity, you go out here to click Install Editor, and then you can find all of the official releases. Uh, so this one I have installed, but if I wanted to install the 2020 long-term support version, I could. If I wanted to support uh, to do another another version, I could. I also have access to pre-releases and alphas and betas. I'm usually not that brave unless there's something really, really interesting coming out. And then you can find older uh, older versions if you need a very specific version of Unity if you're following along with a course or working with a team or something like that. Okay, uh, so if that's the first thing you're going to want to do. Uh, when you do install a version of Unity, you're going to be prompted to choose a bunch of different stuff. Usually the defaults are pretty good for you, and I would actually recommend uh, recommend taking the defaults unless you need to be able to do some very specific types of builds. Uh, so for example, if you want WebGL build support, then you might check that box. But if you're just starting to prototype a project, I'd actually just leave these uh, un uh, unchecked uh, because as soon as I start checking things on, I'm really adding on significantly to that build size right there. Okay? Like it, it grows pretty sizably, and if you have multiple versions of Unity installed, yeah, you're, you're adding a lot more to, to that than you need to. Okay. There's also a Learn and a Community tab here. So Learn has a lot of nice, helpful resources for Unity. Uh, I might do another video uh, actually on the amount of con content out there that Unity has for you to help you learn uh, about uh, how to work with their tooling because it's, it's pretty awesome. Uh, community tab gives us a, a lot of fun stuff out there, such as links to the Unity blog and uh, uh, forums and the asset store and stuff like that likely you probably want to start a new game. So if you wanted to start a new game project, you can click new project on the projects blade and it's going to ask you what uh, templates you want to use. Now these templates vary based on which editor version you're using. So you're going to make sure you have the right editor version selected up here uh, to have access to all the templates for that version of the editor. Okay. So if you look at this, you see some of these things have cloud icons next to them. That means that they're not yet downloaded on your machine. If I really wanted to do an, uh, an, an AR augmented reality project, I could select it and then click download template, and then it actually installs that. It takes just a minute or so, a very short download. But you're going to be making a couple key decisions here. So first, you need to decide between 2D and 3D. Now, Unity is a 3D editor. It was built as a 3D editor, and they kind of added on 2D after the fact. What 2D is, is basically some good settings for 2D projects like side scrollers, top down shooters, stuff like that, that might need to use a tile map, 2D collisions and stuff like that. 3D is for really everything else. Um, so if you're making a, a really two dimensional game, including a 2.5D, like a 3D background, then 2D has some, some significant things that you might want to consider. Uh, otherwise, 3D is a pretty good default. Um, and you can always change these afterwards with the uh, project settings and packages uh, that you might install or remove. The next thing you're going to see is you can see some of these things have URP or HDRP. Um, this is the render pipeline. 
Okay, so you have the standard render pipeline, which is very normal and efficient way of working with is really the legacy way of working with rendering in Unity. Uh, it can do most things. Uh, but then Unity added a couple others. They added the uh, universal render pipeline. This is a very efficient, streamlined version of the standard pipeline uh, that uh, performs better on mobile. It can perform better on poorer machines. I tend to make most of my projects using URP. There is some adjustments you have to do to migrate old materials onto URP. Uh, so there's maybe a little bit more work with textures and materials, um, but the payoff is pretty nice for performance. Now there's also HDRP, or the High Definition Render Pipeline. Now this is for your applications that really want to push the visual system to its limits. You can get some really good stuff from standard shaders, uh, but if you really want to go past that, uh, you can get additional control uh, through HDRP. But that does come at a price of maybe a little bit more performance requirements for these machines running it. So it's really up to you and your team as to what you want to do and work with uh, for your projects. Most everything I'm going to be showing you for my videos are going to be pretty much 3D URP or 3D projects. Um, really, there's not too much differences between the two of them other than how you configure your materials. Right? So once you have uh, something set up, you're going to give it a project, click Create Project, and it's going to go, go to town and, and install that, create the project, and it should open you up in the Unity editor. So uh, happy coding, and uh, look forward to more content for you.